Hi everyone and uh, welcome back. So in this video we are going to talk about uh, in-memory cache in NestJS. Okay, so we have talked about like uh, how we are able to connect to the Postgres, get the data from the APIs and all these things. Now another thing is what if we don't want it to hit the database every time whenever there is a API query or uh, REST API query is coming, right? We wanted to cache a particular response for uh, like 5 second, 10 second or a minute and if the multiple requests are coming, we are going to send the response back from the cache, right? So for that particular thing, we are going to use uh, NestJS cache, okay? So in memory cache and what we can do is here is our controller and we can say that all these APIs like get or get request, we can't cache the post, we can't cache the put but the search these set of APIs we can actually implement a cache for them. What that cache will do is if you are getting a thousands of the request in a particular duration all will get the same response until unless you are changing the query parameter or something in the request. Okay so for that we are going to use cache module and cache module is a part of NestJS common. So go to our domain module and here we will include a cache module like this and we can just say cache module dot register in uh, further videos we will also talk about how to create a dynamic module I mean if what if you wanted to create your own uh, module so this is a static initialization you can see cache module dot register does it provide any other method you can see register async so in most of the modules you will see these two set of methods root async root register register async right so register means it's a synchronous initialization cache module dot register and we can also provide some arguments in the cache module dot register is like uh, TTL and maximum duration. Uh, let's pass this is an object and we can say TTL and maximum duration is maximum number of elements in the cache is 100 by default. Okay schedule event. Okay everything is clean now. So we are trying to implement a cache module and that will be added at the uh, controller level because what we want is whenever there is a response is coming, response is going back to the client uh, while request is coming, we will be using the interceptor, okay? And that interceptor will help us to store the cache for the request response, okay? So we will write uh, the cache interceptor and we will also see how we can invalidate the cache. And this cache interceptor is coming from NestJS common. Let's go to our controller. We don't need to write it. It's like it's already there. And is increasing the, the line and length. Let's remove the things which we are not using. Okay, and we have to include one more thing which is a cache interceptor. And this cache interceptor we can add at a controller level, I mean the whole controller or at the route level. We want to do it only for search. So we can use use interceptor and the cache interceptor. So this cache interceptor is also coming from NestJS common, use interceptor is there. So if we call this endpoint two times, NestJS doesn't invoke get post method twice, instead it returns the cache data for the second time, right? So whatever the search elastic we are calling, it's not going to call that method again because it holds the value of the response till the TTL expires, okay? Now what we, what we are doing here is a uh, very important thing is uh, NestJS will store the response of the this particular method separately for every combinations of the request query parameter. Currently we are not having any query, yes we have the query parameter here, right? So consider in the search DTO we are passing search term, okay? Search term and tags and a lot of things are the other there, right? So this is an object. So consider if you are keep passing the same search term, nothing else, then it will actually keep sending the response. But if you are changing the, the search parameter, okay, here is the search term is something like this. This is API post search and, and search term equal to hello. Okay, now this next request, you change the search term, right? For that, this request is totally different from the first one. So it will not use the cache, it will create a new cache key for this particular API response. So we have 
cache interceptor for a particular endpoint we can also use it for the whole controller okay we could even use for the whole module so always these pipes controllers can be used at the whole application level controller level or the route level so this is the route level when you put this on top of here it will be at the route level but we uh, it will be at the controller level but we don't need it we need it only for the get request which are search okay so uh, this is actually indirectly using the cache module and we can also access the cache using cache manager okay so what we can do is okay let's say you call this uh, search method once and this particular key will be available in the cache and you want you are curious that what is there in the cache module so you can actually access the cache manager data by just doing a dependency injection here so here is my cache and you can see this dot cache manager dot get key okay we need to just resolve these imports this is the cache manager okay now there may be a multiple keys in the cache okay what you can do is you can manually delete the key we will also talk about this with the radis that how you can actually get set all these keys if you are using this in memory cache also so i was just trying to do some just a dummy operation here nothing to do with the apis this dot cache manager dot get key and if you know the key name then you can actually get the key okay uh, it doesn't exist this dot cache manager dot get key let me just see what all methods we have add okay add all delete keys so it will give you all the keys and then you can iterate and you can see what or uh, what particular which particular key you wanted to get so we can actually use a cache manager which is like a key value store you can retrieve delete reset all these things and you can also invalidate the cache okay so what you are doing is uh, you can also invalidate the cache just by calling one particular method dot delete is there right if you already know the key name then you can delete it so this is just a simple example we will talk about this in the context of redis which where we are actually using the cache manager as an external service so currently this cache caching is just internal to the nest.js it's in memory thing it, it is just storing the api response based on whatever you have added wherever you have used this interceptor but what if i wanted to use this cache client as a redis so all the key values stored will be the responsibility of the the redis you can have a redis uh, managed services and here in the domain module i think uh, cache module dot register and here you can actually provide a custom provider uh, where you can also define the redis as your cache manager so this redis option uh, let's see cache module it's a key value pair and uh, cache manager options what do we have here yes here i'm talking about store so there is a store and this store can be your redis this can be the redis store right or any other uh, cache manager cache provider so while creating while doing this uh, cache module dot register you can actually provide the redis as a cache store okay that you will let's take a look on to that in the next video how we can use the redis to actually store key value parameter for your apis like like simple example is you are using jwt token user is getting logged in you wanted to store some metadata jwt tokens are the stateless but you still wanted to store the state of that token somewhere or st you wanted to store the data of the logged in user in the redis somewhere so the other microservices can get get it get the data from there then once the user is logged in you get the decoded payload from the token and store it in the redis okay that means you are storing the state of the logged in user somewhere outside okay uh, let's take a look on to that in the next video uh, thanks everyone